So we covered this story before, and this has Ukraine in shambles. Uh, we talked about this with Mark Kimberly. I did a uh, short uh, hotspot video over the fact that the majority of Americans are opposing war uh, additional funds for Ukraine. Now, this is despite all the massive propaganda that came from our media. And one, of the, one part of propaganda was pretending that Russia was losing. Pretending that Ukraine is winning was a very important part of their propaganda pro campaign. Even though it never made any sense, they had any facts, because people will not be able to justify sending hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine to fight the nuclear power of Russia yeah. when they are destined to lose. So that's why they tell you lies that Ukraine is winning. Because if it, it ain't like, oh man, Ukraine stand no chance, but let's send billions of dollars. You guys go, no, 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 no. What the fuck? They don't stand no chance. So that's what we've been saying. There's a thousand reasons to oppose funding. I mean, a thousand reasons, let alone the principal reason to be against Nazism, right? The uh, the will to be anti-imperial, right? But one of, the, one of the most obvious reasons to be against Ukraine funding is that you guys want to waste all this money on the military industrial complex for mm -hmm. a losing battle. The only thing that you guys do by doing this is to stand the battle and lead to more people dying, which is why it makes no sense for anyone who considers themselves to be on the left uh, 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 or anti-imperialist to be for Ukraine funding. And I have used it as a recent litmus test where if you get this issue wrong, like Marianne Wilson and many of the NATO left, I know we're not, we're not dealing with a serious actor who understand global consequences of these policies. So the American people uh, lost interest on this. And I'm going to pull this article up because you have this Ukraine counteroffensive that took them forever to launch. And there's a lot of people who theorize that the West kind of pressured Ukraine to go on a, a counteroffensive. Here it is. I don't know why I lost the article, but I got it back now. Um, there's, there's theories that the United States and the NATO left pressured Ukraine to do this counteroffensive. Because you already started to see support drop and having this long stalemate for a long time without anything to show for his back. So they was almost pressured to do this. So they did it. And now, despite weeks of lying, like, oh my God. And I don't know if you've seen this, see John, CNN, MSNBC, they'll say, yeah, new update. The Ukrainian counteroffensive is doing well. Our source, trust me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I going to show you any evidence of that? Nope. No, to trust me, I'm a proper <laughs> news person. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you that uh, that the, the Ukraine offensive is going, is going well. Everyone knew that was bullshit. Anyone who was following this war knew that the, the Ukrainian counteroffensive was just leading to massive deaths and casualties. You guys know Ukraine has lost 43,000 men in this counteroffensive. Counter you want to know how much they got, CJ? They got a 100 square kilometers. 43,000 men. Wow. One very small piece of the map. 100 kilometers. kilometers. That's it. So now you know it's bad. Now that we have Western media propaganda outlets that are forced to acknowledge this reality. So this is from CNN. Western allies receive increasingly sobering updates on Ukraine's counteroffensive. This is the most difficult time of the war. And you want to know what's extremely satisfying about this? What's extremely satisfying about this is because the Ukraine and the Western imperialist NATO side is currently in absolute shambles over this. <laughs> you, They are infighting now. And I'm going to show you guys this here later in this segment. There, You got people in the Western media. This is the segment version. I'm going to show you this. Where they kind of throw Ukraine under the bus for this. And then you have Ukraine that is blaming the West for not doing enough. So the cracks are starting to form, and they're starting to form very aggressively. So that's the article version. To save time, let's watch the video version, because the video version is so much more satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> because when you read the article, you get a lot of facts, a lot of details, a few, a few quotes. But the video version, you hear the pure cope and reckoning a CNN voice when they realize that we've been lying to our audience for the last five to six weeks, we hope they don't realize it. <laughs> so, there's a lot of breakdowns, so let's get into the uh, video. Do you, do you uh, want to chime in going once, going twice? 
before we start? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to stop a few times, but I'm going to let it play in the beginning here. Because there's a lot to say. I, I watched this segment this morning. I was dying laughing. This segment is pure cope. And also propaganda report. Let's watch it. Overnight, two Russian missiles struck a city in eastern Ukraine, killing seven people, injuring 80 others. Officials say those missile strikes happened within 30 to 40 minutes of one another. The second missile striking right as first responders arrived to help people. There's also this new CNN reporting this morning on Ukraine's counteroffensive just weeks into it. Western officials tell our colleague Jim Shudo their concern. The assessment of the battle to regain territory is increasingly sobering. Illinois Congressman Mike Quigley just recently returned from meetings in Europe with U.S. commanders training Ukrainian forces, told CNN, quote, our briefings are sobering. We're reminded of the challenges they face. This is the most difficult time of the war. Joining us now, retired Army Major Mike Lyons. Do you agree with Quigley's assessment? I mean, not he was meeting with the people that are training mm -hmm. the Ukrainians. Yeah. You know, so it's two months to the day since the counteroffensive started. They've gained maybe 10 square miles. Ah! So not a lot. <laughs> You know, attacking frontal. Force. I must take it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's listen to that part again. This is the part where they actually have to acknowledge this. And, and I'm showing you guys this segment because you guys know I watch a ton of these. I watch a ton of these Ukraine statements. This is one of the first times I've seen them acknowledge it, CJ. But, uh, we only got we only got 10 sports. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting with the people that are training mm -hmm. the Ukrainians. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's two months to the day since the counteroffensive started. They've gained maybe. 10 square <laughs> miles or so, not a lot. I gave him too much you know, credit. Attacking frontal fortifications. <laughs> when I I think I gave him too much credit earlier. They, this guy even saying he got less than I thought, if I'm reading it right. But anyway, let's continue. Can you focus by minefields without air superiority? Not a lot of times in history you can show that's been successful. Um, I think we've set the expectation high for what the Ukraine military can do, um, but they're not. Oh, did you, sir? So. They told you guys, and dumb, dumb leftists believed them. They told you that Ukraine, just because they were giving weapons to NATO, is going to defeat one of the strongest military powers in recent human history. And you, you think you overhyped it up a bit, sir? <laughs> just a little bit? You don't say. This is what we've been telling you guys for a while now. He just, yeah, I think we kind of overhyped this. You think? <laughs> you think, sir? And not actually. Why do you think? Why do you think ahead. they're coming out now? I think it's because, one, let me just say this. If they're coming out now saying how bad this was, this means this has been bad for probably a couple months already. Oh, yeah, it, it, and they're just now bad. coming out. But so is it that now there's no way to hide it? Like there's no more smoke and mirrors that they can do. There's no more like the, the weapons are depleted. Their men are gone. There's People have seen video of you kidnapping people, trying to put them in the military in Ukraine. Like, is it no more hiding this? Why do you think Man, they're coming out with saying this? They now? lost 43,000. And once again, this is one number I found. I found this real quick. The number is probably more. They lost 43,000 men in a few weeks. How can you really hide that? Like, when they've been blatantly lying about everything in this war, and the anti-imperialist media have been trying to call them out the best they can. But when you had this big counteroffensive that every, not only the United States, but every single Western media hyped, are you going to cover up 40,000 people dying in this? They can't. <laughs> to answer your question straight up plainly, CJ. That's it. The fucking cracks are forming. In a, uh, they are in shambles. They can't hide how much they have failed here. And now they're just in shambles. Let's continue to watch this because they're going to throw a few shades. And I, may, I don't know if I missed one of them, but they, they throw a few shades at Ukraine's side. And then he, he realizes it later. And he's like, oh, well, it's actually not the Ukrainian people's fault. But they kind of suck. But not their fault, though. Uh, I wish they fought this better, though. Let's continue. And let me so, say this part. Let me yeah. put this comment yeah, no, I, up here because this speaks to their downplaying, using words like sobering. It's a lot of soft yeah. language you, you hear them using. When if this let's say they were describing Russia's position and Russia's position was Ukrainian counteroffensive, yeah. right? They'd be yeah. like, Russia got their ass beat, man. They got their ass. That's how they would be describing it. Yeah. But you see how they're using very soft language because if they came out and was very frank, then what would be the next question? America would be like, then why the fuck are we sending billions of dollars yep. over there? To a losing yep. battle, and that's why they have to have this soft language. So, to the point of David, the fa the failing counteroffensive is sobering, but 
400,000 K dead Ukrainians is not because that's the total since this, this whole war is something like, I, that's what I've heard a couple of hundred thousand. And you said 46,000 just in this court counter offensive, just slaughtering and lives just and the U S don't care. U S and NATO just like, ah, at least we're getting rid you of, guys realize we're wreaking in, Ru- in Russia. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Cedar, but you guys know it's almost impossible to get the number on that because the Ukrainian government officials constantly lie. All these numbers, and to be clear, guys, Russia is not an honest saying either. Like, if I'm gonna be real yeah, with you guys, exactly, Russia yeah, also exactly. inflates they inflate the amount of Ukrainians they kill. Ukraine inflate, uh, 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 try to downplay the amount of people that they uh, that killed on their side. So, we have very educated guesses, like, no one really knows. Like, we may be known in a few years because of war fog, right? Uh, but to them, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, they lost all these people. It's just a sombering reminder. Can you imagine if there was videos of Russia? Forcibly constrict, constrict, constricting men, taking them on the street and force them to enroll in order to, for them to go on offensive. That is what Ukraine is doing now. What they are doing is a war crime. Murray Kimberly explained this on our show yesterday. They are forcing Ukrainian men to go on the battlefield or at, a, at the threat of gunpoint. Imagine Russia was caught doing that. Then, well, let's watch this because they're going to, and later in this video, they're going to address this very important point that you make, CJ. Where they're like, man, they're going to cover the poll where. People are not supporting Ukraine aid, and that's when they really start to panic. So let's let's continue. Yeah. Attacking frontal fortifications reinforced by minefields without air superiority. Not a lot of times in history you can show that's been successful. Um, I think so that in that line, I didn't cover that earlier. I didn't emphasize that line. That's essentially him saying, yeah, technically, if you think about it, the counteroffensive was always doomed to fail. <laughs> like you, if you guys want, that's a translation of what you just said. You think about it, this shit was never gonna work. So why were you guys lying about it? We were saying that on RBN months ago. Anyone who said that this counteroffensive was not gonna work would call a Putin puppet, right? So I want you guys to see this part again because this is the part where he says it. I'm gonna let it play some more. This is the part where he acknowledges that Ukraine never had a chance or fighting capacity is not enough to defeat Russia, which was obvious to anyone who had basic common sense. You know, attacking frontal fortifications reinforced by minefields. Without air superiority, not a lot of times in history you can show that's been successful. Um, I think we've set the expectation high for what the Ukrainian military can do, um, but they're not fighting a combined arms fight. They're not fighting a counteroffensive the way that historically shown has been successful. Not their fault, um, but they're doing. You see, the you see that's the part. So I'm, I'm glad to see we've got. That's the part where he realized he was dragging them a little bit too hard. He's like, "Oh, actually, it's not their fault, though." <laughs> hey, well, let's continue some sober reality with regards to the situation there. Abrams tanks will be there in the fall, so that will be uh, obviously uh, helpful, but as Jim's really? reporting, that it's not about hardware. It's yeah. not about uh, weapon support, so how much can that help? You know, because the Abrams tanks are, are going to get there at a time when the rainy season is going to start. And the way tanks are deployed effectively is when they're used for shock effects. And if you're Russia, you're seeing where those tanks are going to go because that's exactly where the offensive. Russia had destroyed thousands of these little yeah, tanks. Yeah, it's going to. So he's pretending, and the whole media is pretending that the 50 tanks. <laughs> Like Biden signed an order for like 50 fucking tanks. So just after Russia killed, destroyed hundreds and thousands of these tanks, they're going to get 50 in the fall and that's going to change the war, CJ. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's continue. And 50 just- tanks, and if it understand, when you're transporting tanks, tanks don't drive from where they're manufactured to the battlefield. They are yeah. transported. And in order to transport them, these big, this big train system, you transporting them, but the enemy with their satellite, they can see the shit and just yeah. kill it, pick it off and, and blow it up. So tanks are very, uh, it requires a lot of work of maintenance and, and transportation. Cause now you got you gotta, ha- along with the tanks, you gotta have sort of a defense system that's counter to the people that's going to be blowing your shit up. This is yeah, why and- Russia blew up a bunch of their tanks already, and they're probably gonna blow up half the tanks they're gonna be sending in the fall too. I just want—I wanted to touch on a point that when he said uh, it's not their fault, uh, well, who the fuck fault is it? Well, I don't know. He do have a point. Maybe it's the U.S.'s fault. Maybe it's NATO's fault for training these people. Well, the people that <laughs> they originally trained for only two months, 
and sent them to go fight some people who was training to fight their entire life, people that can take down a rifle in less than 10 seconds. These are the people that they train for two months to go fight against. So yeah, it may, maybe maybe it, it isn't their fault that they're ill-equipped, but <laughs> you know. It, it's uh, not their fault in the sense that they never had a chance in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and they was hyped up for no reason. And to your point, CJ, regarding the insane logistics, does you not you know how much time and the cost that it takes to train people to learn it, to operate these tanks? And that was another major obstacle. So remember, what, what did they say? We're not going to have NATO troops. We're not going to have U.S. troops. It's going to be Ukraine arming these, uh, these weapon systems. How many Ukrainians have fucking experience <laughs> with M1 Abrams tanks? And you know how long it takes to train? And, and I've heard someone break this down before. It takes at least, and this is if someone is a fucking natural, like he's a sort of savant, maybe six months to learn how to use a tank. And that if that if the motherfucker's Rambo. The motherfucker's Punisher, and you take that motherfucker to drive a tank in six months, right? But they want they want to you to believe that they're gonna send fifty tanks and train fifty Ukrainians to be Rambo before the fall on the front line. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Let's continue. We still got another three minutes. Well, we, 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 we also go ahead, wrong. Go ahead, wrong. This, this is one of the reasons why the blockade. It isn't because of Russia misinformation and blah, blah, blah. They did not want us to see what really is going to go down that on that battlefield. We knew uh, uh, Russia was going to be kicking ass, but we didn't see. We didn't think it was going to be like this fucking bloody. <laughs> but yeah, they did not They did not want us to see the truth, what was going to go down. They didn't want us talking about it, but you can't hide it anymore. We got all these uh, apps and we're still connecting with people uh, uh, in Russia and Ukraine and whatnot. So we still have the information. They can't hide this anymore. Yeah, well said. Let's. I'm gonna continue the video. I can't wait to get to the point where they discuss the poll numbers. That's the part I really want to get to. <laughs> I think I saw that part. That part I think is up. Yeah, so let's check it out. Hilarious shock effect. And if you're Russia, you're seeing where those tanks are going to go because that's exactly where the offensive uh, priority is going to be at that time. And what you'll do is you'll move troops there to counterbalance them. There's only 31 tanks or so showing up. They're not going to be that much of a difference maker. There's a huge statistical <laughs> tooth to tail ratio Ooh. that goes with those tanks. Um, will they make a difference? They're going to allow more Ukrainian crews to survive, but those tanks still don't have any more capability to, to go through minefields or do other things. So again, without the combined arms, without the air superiority i think this is still gonna remain a stalemate so essentially he's saying they're fucked <laughs> so he's saying he said at one end he was like well at least we got tanks coming and he is so bad it's propaganda he he then contradicts himself almost immediately at first he says yeah we're sending tanks that should help they should be here by the fall but we only sit in 30 and they can't traverse through minefields anyway so <laughs> he says they're not gonna make much of a difference anyway so yeah. so why, why are you gonna send them yeah, why you right in front of our face? <laughs> yeah, he was the one who brought the tanks up to talk about, oh, well, this is what we're going to do to to help change the game. And then he realized what he's saying was bullshit, mid-sentence. But anyway, let's continue. There's a real question about what Ukraine's going to need from the U.S. in mm -hmm. terms of additional funding, additional weapons, et cetera. Right. And the U.S. public sentiment on it is changing. There is really striking uh, reality in this new CNN polling. What it shows is that a majority of Americans disapprove of another support package for Ukraine. 45% approve it. Should Congress authorize more funding to Ukraine? 55% oppose it. Now, in this poll, and I cover this in my hotspot while I talk about the Ukraine funding, it's important to realize in this number, four out almost four out of 10 Democrats are not for funding Ukraine. Mm. That's giant, guys. Like, that's huge. Like, the same way I told you guys, like, according to polls, three out of 10 ultra conservative Republicans are for defund the police. That's good. Like the whole point is not to win over everybody, but we talking about Democrats, CJ. Like, how imagine how yeah, fucked up your propaganda lot. is that four out of ten Democrats watch Rachel Maddow, four out of ten <laughs> Democrats watch a press conference <laughs> with some Democrat talking about Ukraine, and they don't buy it, dude. That's a lot, guys. Like, I know this is these it, these go ahead. These polls are grades. You remember when you was young, yeah. guys? We got our report cards, and you know we we got chastised by our parents that we had mm -hmm. something some bad. Some bad grades on there. This is this is them. Yeah. So imagine, yeah. imagine it's yeah. you, Nick. You got yeah. F's on your report card, and you're <laughs> the one who has to present the evidence, like yeah. what they're doing now. You have to go look, look at my yeah. F right here, uh, mommy and daddy. That's essentially what they're doing because 
as much propaganda as they as they has they have been doing cuz what did Margaret Kimberly say in her lifetime she's never seen this level of war yeah. propaganda and 55% of people are saying you better not send no money to the motherfuckers still <laughs> yep. yep they're getting the f go ahead yeah, Roman, I, I don't know. I think you want to chime in. I can continue the video if not. Oh, no, no. I was, I was just laughing at y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, no, let's, let's see how they report on this failing report card. Because that's a perfect analogy for the situation. And I can't wait to see. This is the only segment I've seen to, thus far. I'm sure there's going to be more. But I can't wait, personally, as a nerd, to see these people report on this. Because you're going to see they have, they're going to have their tail between their legs. It's almost like, oh, man, we can't fucked up here so let's let's see what, what they blame on this on the on these numbers so i'll go back a little bit i'll let it play for five percent approve it should congress authorize more funding to ukraine 55 percent oppose it yeah this is what vladimir putin wants to happen ah. right now that you see it's so, 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 so you know how when you're a kid you know how when you're a kid and you fucks up in your home you fucked your homework up the dog ate your homework so the yeah. dog ate our homework when we fucked up in school so the propagandist excuse for this is Putin ate his homework essentially <laughs> if it wasn't for that goddamn Vladimir Putin our propaganda would be working right now <laughs> hilarious let, 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 you let, rewind let, it let, let, by, yeah, I was, yeah you already know what I'm thinking yeah rewind it I gotta hear that yeah. again five percent oppose it yeah this is what Vladimir Putin wants to happen <laughs> if he hangs on to this land that he has right now that he's seized illegally um gets through the the the, the, the fall and then the winter we're now into next spring here and our political season presidential elections running uh, who knows what the politicians will say because this is really what 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 uh, you know where the money's going to come from the Ukraine government needs a commitment from NATO from the United States saying we're all in for however long it takes the problem is that doesn't jive with our political cycles here, and the United States leads the way with all these economic packages. That doesn't vibe with our political cycle. So what he said is, he said the United States position should be that we provide endless weapons, endless weapons to one of the most corrupt countries in order to provoke a nuclear war with a, with a nuclear armed country. But goddamn, too bad people don't support that, though. <laughs> if we were in a democracy... And go if ahead. we were in a democracy, this segment would go like this. And he would go, well, 55% of people say we don't want this shit. So he should yeah. be saying, well, it's time to, it's time to, Backing it's up. time to uh, draw down the troops. It's time to uh, yeah. or, uh, draw down the money because we live in a democracy. The people obviously don't want us to be doing this. So we need to wipe our hands of this and bring, yes. and bring this money back down to, uh, back to uh, the Americans. That that's are that's a great point. Boy, that's a great point, CJ. Or they will at least show respect. They would at least say 55% of Americans don't support this. So how can we make our message resonate with them? How can we sell this to them? But what they're saying essentially is that, oh, we don't have the mechanism to enforce this. So what he wants, he wants no democracy. He wants the people to have no say whatsoever. So that's actually a great point. Here he is complaining that they had to follow the will of the people. <laughs> Like, this is such a giant omission. I won't play this part again because it says a lot about the mindset of the, of the Ukrainian supporters. For one, he said something that's completely unhinged. I want you guys to hear that part again. So after saying something that's completely unhinged, you're like, man, why don't Americans buy this unhinged pro-war garbage? So I want you guys to hear that again. elections running. Uh, who knows what the politicians will say? Because this is really what, what, what uh, you know, where the money's going to come from. The Ukraine government needs a commitment from NATO, from the United States, saying we're all in for however long it takes. The problem is that doesn't jive with our political cycles here. And the United States leads the way with all these economic packages as well as the military packages. So um, that's what Putin is, ho is hoping that will happen, that we'll lose. Interest. So you're saying if the U.S. fails to authorize further funding, you think its Western allies will follow? I'm not sure the Western allies have the capability. Um, and capacity to make the difference that Ukraine is going to need in order to uh, sustain itself. Uh, they need Patriot missiles. They think they need things that only come from the United States and U.S. defense. Now, with that point he just make, do you guys realize how stupid the fucking position of Marianne Williamson is? So, CJ, what did he just say? He said, the well, the reporter asked him, why can't the, our alli other allies contribute? And we, we reported on the fact that Germany ran out of fucking weapons to mm -hmm. the Ukraine. The United States is individually funding this war. That's why when Marianne Williamson say stupid shit like, well, what can we do to stop the war? That is possibly one of the dumbest questions you can ask. 
Because as he is saying, we are the ones driving this shit. Without the U.S. aid, the Ukraine will be Ukraine will be forced to negotiate. So when people say, "What?" Well, Bernie says this too. Well, what can we do? What can we? We can't tell Ukraine to stop fighting. Yes, we can. We can stop fucking arming them. We got. We play the largest role in this motherfucker. Anyway, let's continue. This, we got the this, most this, to lose. We got the most to lose, and like like the polls say, 55 percent, which I'm pretty sure. It's under poll, and you know yeah. I'm pretty sure they took with the numbers. Fifty-five percent of people don't agree with sending money and aid to Ukraine. Sixty percent of our people is living paycheck to paycheck. So maybe it's maybe it got something to do with that. Maybe Americans are yeah. just too poor to care, right? Because as I'm seeing, Ukraine get more money and more aid than my black community. Just just my small black community get way more aid. Than we ever seen that does something to me and a regular voter. So you might have a Democrat who who be like, oh yeah, well it's just uh, it's, it's another war, you know. Go ahead, send them the money, blah blah blah. You're like, hold on, how much we sending? Again, we sending ten billion? What the fuck? A hundred million again, again, again? While you are facing evictions, right? While your lights is uh, possibly getting turned off, you're feeling the real fuck. You got the shit end of the stick while Ukraine over there. Soaking it up all your fucking money. And it's uncounted for thanks to Bernie Sanders. So we won't even know who the fuck got what. Yeah. Thank you, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Thanks a and lot. They, yeah, they, they don't want any oversight over none of this stuff. But we only we only have 90 seconds left in this clip. So I'm gonna let it play all the way through since we're almost done with it. So I'm gonna let it play all the way through and let's save our comments for the last part to the end. Cause I have just two more quick things. And CJ, you can, I have a. Um, I don't know if you have enough stories, but I can pass it to you in between. We got the yeah. Morning Joe, Chris Christie, and then we got yeah, that's actually part of my presentation. One. We probably okay. have some overlapping stuff here, so we, okay, I'm a, no worries. Let me know if you have something you want to cover quickly. Uh, so I'm gonna let this play all the way through, and then we come at the end. Just that's contractors, and you can't crank that machine up quick enough to get some of that material there at the time. Look at the tanks. I mean, we're the the only we only took us took us eight months to get 31 tanks to Ukraine. They need 400 if they want to have any kind of offense. So we learned overnight uh, a detail about new textbooks in Russia yeah. that will address the invasion of Ukraine as the uh, addition of. Yeah, new I think I covered it. Want, this part not this part not that important. I covered what I mostly want to cover just for a sake of time. This part really nothing to add here. But this guy says a lot of stuff that is absolutely unhinged. But he accidentally telling the truth in some ways. Because remember he said he like we doing a horrible job delivering tanks. We deliver we deliver thirty in eight months and I left. Because if you watch every other fucking news channel, they will say, oh, the tanks is coming. Nigga, Ukraine might be saying, nigga, Ukraine might be saying. That's why I am dying because this guy is saying the, the sober truth, but he also saying it in one of the most unhinged ways possible because he said, yeah, we doing a horrible job sending them tanks. We sent them 38 months. We need to send them 400. <laughs> we need to go full flags war. You guys see, he, you guys see how he telling the truth while being unhinged at the same time? So, yeah, I can't believe that he's saying this, that we're sending 31 tanks. It's taken us eight months to send 31 tanks. If we want them to win, they need 400. So are you saying we should stop sending them money and tanks because they're going to lose? Or are you saying we need to send them 369 more tanks? Like, which which are you saying here, sir? But go ahead. He's, he's, he's making an argument. He said it earlier before that we need to do everything the Ukraine can win to the end. He's making an argument for never ending expansion military budgets never ending expanding military budgets you guys like i want you guys to take the inverse take what they were saying at face value and that's when you realize how absolutely unhinged western united states propagandists are the argument that he's making that we should have a forever endless war no matter what happens to ukraine with russia and then, that's, like, that's an insane position to have but uh, I want to move, move on to Rome. You want to chime in real quick? I, want to I, I just wanted to point out to something you said earlier about them, uh, you know, snatching people off the streets. And this is, you know, you can really see it. Their army is built off of people who's not trained. They they're really going out there to die for in the name of uh, in the name of the U.S. So have, having these people's hearts not in it. You can't give me a gun and tell me to go fight these. Like, I, I, no, I'm giving up or. You know, I don't know, like, <laughs> I'm just something off the streets, you know? And this is why uh, we've seen 40,000 people get killed 
so quickly because they're not trained for stuff like that. It, it, it's going to continue to happen. Like they said, they're going to fight to the last Ukrainian, not the last Russian, yeah. because they know Ukraine is going to lose and it's going to become another vessel for the U.S. So I'm going to show you guys this because there's articles now that have been critical. And that guy was, believe he, he he saved himself when he said, well, I can't blame Ukrainians. But he did. He blamed their strategy. <laughs> He's saying that this is going nowhere. We gave him way too much expectations. But the Ukraine side is not happy either. <laughs> and I'm greatly enjoying this because in result of this failed counteroffensive that the Ukrainian military was essentially pressured into. Like, at no point during the winter, during the spring, was they ready for a counteroffensive? But there were segments in the Western media say, "Hey, Ukraine counteroffensive is going on, right? Hey, it'd be great if Ukraine have a counteroffensive. Their their funds kind of rely on it, so they're like, God damn, we got just got them counteroffensive. <laughs> they were such a force into it. There been many analysis over that. Now the Ukraine side is not happy, and they are blaming the United States and the West for their failure. So here is a Ukrainian cartoon." Blaming the West. So let's play it. I think it speaks for itself here. Um, and also, one thing I want, want to add, can we watch this clip? The anyway, I'll let, I'll let it play for, for before I add any more commentary. But this is the uh, Ukrainian cartoon blaming us for their failure. Ми повністю підтримуємо Україну і бажаємо їй швидкої перемоги. А також надамо всю необхідну зброю для звільнення земель від окупантів. Це саме те, що нам зараз потрібно. Дякую. Я перепрошую, не могли б ви трохи прискоритись, бо, здається, ворог почав будувати лінію оборони? Ні, ще не час. <рес> ворог почав рити окопи, і з кожним днем лінія оборони стає все сильнішою. Будь ласка, треба прискоритись. Ні, ні, ще не час, зачекайте. <рес> no, ворог вже почав мінувати нашу територію. Чим до... So, uh, well, since we're at the half, halfway point, you guys see the Ukraine's asking for weapons, more weapons and more uh, offensive pressure. While he is doing that, the Russians are fortifying their defense because it's easier to hold land than to take land. So, anyway, let, let's continue the cartoon. Let, that's, let, that's let, just for, for the listening yeah. audience, let's just describe. So we're watching like an animation of a like an, an american representative and a ukraine representative having this conversation is put in an animation and make it a, a little funny so that's what we're watching and we'll we'll kind of give you a play-by-play -play after the second part yeah yeah so watch how russia builds a defense and they and this is why they can't surpass it so let's continue <laughs> Чим довше ми зволікаємо, тим більше втрат понесемо під час наступу. Да що ж ви такі нетерплячі? Почекайте ще трохи. Ех, здається, мені ворог уже повністю готовий до оборони. Що ж, чудово. Тепер тримайте. Д дякую. <кхем> Не могли б ви трохи прискоритись? Ваш наступ занадто повільний. А як на рахунок літаків? Підтримка з повітря нам би зараз не була зайвою. О, так, звісно. You guys are great. You guys are great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so you want to describe it, Nick, for the audience? Go ahead. If you would describe so this that is funny, bit. but it's not supposed to be funny for the Ukrainians. So they made this video to complain, but you guys see this is hilarious to us. Because they were saying what we were telling you guys for weeks, for weeks, the Ukraine is looking at the, the defensive that the Russians set up and said, how the fuck are we getting past that? How the fuck are we? You guys see they got mines and shit? And we told you guys, 40,000 dead Ukrainians in a few weeks. Now you guys see why that is? They got trenches. They got all these defensive formations set up. But the United States like, here's a, here, here's a, here's a, here's a here are 30 tanks. Good luck. That's why the guy called Don't forget the shovel. The, the Ukrainians are screwed. The Ukrainians are screwed. They the West has now put all the press all this pressure on Ukraine. And they kind of in a not so subtle way saying, Man, you gotta defeat Russia or you're not going to NATO, bro. <laughs> you really gotta defeat Russia or you're not going to NATO, fam. You gotta defeat Russia. You gotta uh, pick up this counteroffensive. That's what the West is saying, but they are doomed to fail, which is why anti-war people are speaking out against the Western regime because we are we care about the Ukrainian people. 
You guys see how the exact opposite that Voss think it is? Voss think he cares about the Ukrainian people as he sets them up for this fucking disaster called a counteroffensive. Where thou thousands and thousands of Ukrainians are dying. People have been forced to fight in these wars that they have no chance of winning. But the now, NATO you, doesn't they care about the Ukrainian people, though. Yeah, but, but we if we were to them. ask Ukrainian directly, hey, like hindsight now, guys, let's let's talk about this. <laughs> Would you would you rather have back tens of thousands of your family members? Is that a good trade off? And you give up this land in the Donbass, which why a hundred a hundred percent of them will be like, "Oh, uh, we'll take that trade off." Here, take that, that land over there if you family. give me back my family member. The thou tens of thousands. We're talking tens of thousands just in this counteroffensive. We're talking a couple of hundred thousand when we're talking about the total war. To, to, to this is what you're to trying your... to tell me is the win. Corporate media went with Trump, especially when he was saying a, a be against the war, they keep framing wins and losses as land, taking land, not people's lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now we're double back on that. But go now, ahead. To your, uh, point, CJ, to your point, CJ, to your question, I think the answer is obvious. You guys know Zelensky won on a peace platform? Yeah. He, he ran on peace. Knowing that he ran on peace, Zelensky had a, a peace deal worked out. The Ukrainians wanted the peace deal, then Boris Johnson in the West stopped it. So I think that proves your point exactly, CJ. Exactly, that the Ukrainians will love peace. But now at this point, the West, BlackRock owns all their shit now. Yep. <laughs> you guys saw how much BlackRock is about to own Ukraine now? They yeah. All this aid that was sent to Ukraine, it's technically not even fair to call it aid because it's a loan. Like, you guys realize that the West owns Ukraine now? That was the whole part of this? That's why they wanted to do this? They're going to have a very sexy repayment plan schedule. <laughs> the so they're fucked. They're fucked because of the NATO left. Because they almost cannot. They almost have to keep doing this. Even even with the the failings, because if they, let's say, Roman Nick, let's say if they're going to stop right now. Hey, this shit looks terrible. Let's stop. Aren't we gonna start questioning? Like, what the fuck do we send hundred billion dollars to this mm -hmm. shit for? Why the fuck do we do this with this garbage? So they kind of they can't even do that. So even with this offensive, clearly saying this war has been lost, they still gotta kind of put her along. They still because gotta it, do it. Otherwise, we have Russia's, the answer. It's gonna Go prove ahead. Russia's point about NATO pushing Eastern, even though that they, they had an agreement in nineteen ninety two. That they wouldn't do that, you know, and we see that they're pushing for war. Now, what what's funny to me is I love how you know America is being exposed for a paper, well, the US is being exposed for a paper tiger that it is. You know, we can't even you know get the shit right uh, uh to take over Russia. We're not gonna be able to fight Russia and China and Brazil and India at the same fucking time. Right, That's not happening. Right. 